starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight, I wish I may, I wish I might, <laughs> have the wish, I wish tonight. Wow. Oh, hey, Pop Kids. Pastor Paul Gaucher here. Thanks for coming. You know, I was hoping that we'd have a clear night so that we could see the stars together and, and make, some, make some wishes. Have you ever wished upon a star and hoped that your wish would come true? You know, I know lots of people who do that, yeah. You know, I've been thinking a lot about hope uh, and how having hope is way different than a wish and making wishes. Maybe you've never thought about those two words, wishes and hopes, and how they may be different, but they really are very different words. Here's kind of what I mean. Sometimes when you hear someone talking about hope, they're really talking about a wish, like, wow, I, I, I sure hope I get into, we get to go to Disney, Disney World this year, or I, 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 I hope our team wins, or I sure hope we get a snow day soon, you know, and Christmas is coming, speaking of snow, Christmas is coming, and maybe you've heard a friend say something like, I sure hope that I get the wildlife collection of Squishmallows for Christmas, something like that. But you know, when you think about it, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in all of that. I mean, when you wish for any of those things and they, they, they don't happen, it, it's, not, it's not really that big of a deal, is it? Wishing is kind of like, well, hey, let me show you. It's kind of like flipping a coin and hoping that it's heads. Hmm. I hope I get tails this time. Well, I didn't. You know, we might use the word hope, uh, but hopes and wishes are different. But there's a lot of hope that comes from God that's not uncertain at all. There's a kind of hope that comes from God that's for sure. The kind of hope God invites us to have is it, not like wishing things will go my way, like flipping a coin, gee, I hope I get heads or I hope I get tails. It's not leaving things up to chance. Having hope in God is knowing and trusting that, that God will do what God has always promised to do. And because we know that God keeps the promises that God has made, we can trust God. We put our hope in God's promises. In fact, that's our bottom line for this week. You can have hope because God is faithful. One of the most powerful promises in the entire Bible is found in the book of Micah. The prophet Micah tells the people about God's promise to send a savior. Here's the story from the Spark Bible. Let me, let me share this with you. Micah was a prophet. A prophet was a person who spoke God's word to the people. During Micah's time, God's people were terrified. They were afraid. They felt sad and hopeless. And God knew that. And God wanted to help them wanted to reassure them that God had not forgotten them, that God would rescue them. So God sent Micah to the people of Bethlehem, one of the, one of the smallest groups of God's people anywhere. God sent Micah to bring good news. And, and this is the good news that Micah announced to them. From you, little Bethlehem, will come a wonderful leader for the whole world. He will be like a good shepherd who loves and takes care of each sheep in his flock. He will take care of all people, especially those who need extra help. All God's people everywhere will be safe with this leader because he will lead with peace and fairness. He will be the greatest leader the world has ever seen. There is hope. So live with this hope, you people of Bethlehem. God wanted these people to know that they could trust God no matter what, and that they could have hope because God is faithful. 
This kind of hope is not like flipping a coin. This kind of hope is rooted in God's sure promise. It's like gravity. Maybe you've heard of Sir Isaac Newton, who once said, what goes up must come down. When I toss this ball up into the air, I mean, I know that it's going to always come down because it always has and it always will. When I toss the ball up, I know that it's going to come down. So, you know, I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, it'll, well, I know it's going to come back down eventually. So while we're waiting for the ball to come back down, listen to this. While we wait for that ball, I want to ask you a question. What are you hoping for today? Well, maybe you've had a misunderstanding with a friend or you're hoping that things can be smoothed out or, or maybe you're feeling anxious about a class at school or, or taking a test and, and you're hoping the work that you've put in will be enough. Maybe you're worried that you're gonna be sitting all alone during lunch tomorrow and, and you're hoping at least one friend will sit with you. Well, thousands of years ago, when King David was feeling alone, he was feeling nervous and, and lonely, he wrote this in Psalm 71, 5. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. We can trust that God will keep the promises that God has made. Just like every time I threw that ball up in the air, I knew that it would come back down. Whoa, just like that. So friends, putting our hope in God is more like this ball coming down than it is like flipping a coin. When we put our hope in God and God's promises, we can rest and we can be at peace knowing that God is with us no matter what's happening around us. Now, this doesn't mean that challenging things will never happen to us. We know that they continue. But what it does mean is that God will always be fully present with us and help us through whatever we are experiencing. That's hope. That's hope. In fact, that's our bottom line for this week. You can have hope because God is faithful. And we can hold on to that because God has been faithful in the past, is faithful right now, and will always be faithful no matter what. That is the hope we hold on to. So this week, I want to challenge you to ask yourself a question every day. Ask yourself, what am I hoping for today? What am I hoping for today? And I want you to know that even as you ask that question, God is with you.